Good morning, church, and welcome to our online worship for Sunday, December 27th. This is the first Sunday after Christmas, so Merry Christmas, my friends, and I'm so thankful that you are able to join us for this time in worship. My name's Zach Landis. I'm the pastor here. I want to welcome you to church. I'm just glad that you're here. Uh, just a few things about uh, announcements. So we do, we are back to our in-person worship right now. And so thank you for being patient with us as we um, have been looking at the numbers and deciding whether we needed to have in-person worship or whether we needed to stay online only. And so thank you so much for that. We are, you know, still watching the numbers and tracking, especially cases within our church family and cases that have been inside the building. And our plan is to move forward with in-person worship unless there is a pressing need for us to have to close down for some reason. But we just do want to be careful, here, especially here at church, but also at the other events that we do, so that we can continue to meet in person for worship. And don't worry about our online worship. That is going to continue for the foreseeable future until people are all comfortable with coming back for in-person worship. But let us go to the Lord in prayer today. O oh God of promise and mysterious light, be with us this day as we journey in our faith to meet your gift. So give us courage and hope along the way as, you lie, as your light will continue to glow brightly on our path, leading us to service and discipleship. In Jesus' name, amen. Now would you join with me in our call to worship. Arise, shine, the light you have been waiting for is here. The darkness has been banished. God's light of hope floods the earth. God's light comes to all. Lord, make us ready to journey to this light. Prepare our hearts to receive this light. Now, would you join with me as we affirm our faith together? We're going to use the Apostles' Creed as our affirmation. So would you join with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, 
He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I'd like to call you to our time of prayer today where we lift our joys as well as our concerns up to the Lord. I'm going to have our current prayer list come over the screen right now at this time. These are all the people who have asked to be in your prayers, and I ask you to be praying for them throughout the week. Um, if you do have any new people that you'd like to have added, just please let us know in the church office, and we will be happy to add them to the list. Um, I do have a special joy. I, I, we have Bishop Mike McKee uh, joining us for our sermon today. He said that he wanted to give all of the clergy of the North Texas Conference. He's kind of like our pastor because we're not members of the church. We're members of the, of the annual conference. And so the bishop is actually kind of our pastor. He said he wanted to give all of his pastors a Christmas gift by not having to write a sermon this week. And so he videotaped the sermon and gave it to us as a present this week so we could celebrate Christmas with our families without having to write a sermon in the midst of it. So I want to give a special thanks for that as a joy. But my friends, let us join our hearts and our minds together and go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm going to begin by leading us in our prayer time through the pastoral prayer, but then I want to have you join with me as we say the Lord's Prayer at the end. O Lord of bright and abiding light, you have shown on us in the, per in the person of Jesus, your Son, a new way to live. You have poured your light into the world and have asked us to live in the light. Rather than run and hide in the darknesses of doubt and despair. You promise to be our light all of our days and ask us to place our trust in you. That this, the journey in the light is risky. It means that we will have to be very serious about our service to you, giving you our best and offering hope and light to others. So as we are drawing close to a new year, we bring names and situations of others for whom light seems to be a stranger. They struggle with ill health, economic hardship, broken or damaged relationships, the loss of loved ones and anxiety. And Lord, we place them into your care. Let your light shine on them and bring them healing and hope. And help us also to be bearers of that light in all that we do. And we lift this prayer up to you in the Christ child's name who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, it's good to worship with you this day on the Sunday after Christmas. For the reading for the sermon this morning, I'd like to read from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. These words are very familiar, but listen to the reading of God's holy word this day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. 
and the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and full of truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace, and the law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, and no one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So every time when I read this text, I'm drawn to another text. And it's a text that begins the Hebrew Scriptures. In the beginning. In the beginning begins the first story of creation that we find in the book of Genesis. Not the one with Adam and Eve, but that very orderly account of the creation of the world and the universe that comes out of chaos. In the beginning. Let me just read a couple of verses from Genesis chapter 1 for you. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw through that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness God called night. And there was evening and morning on the first day. Isn't it interesting that uh, this gospel writer, John, alludes already to that very beginning of the Hebrew Scripture in the, the creation of, of the universe, the world, out of the chaos or the formless void. And using the same kind of imagery, then this gospel writer begins to talk about the Word. Not named in the beginning, this Word. The Word from God. The word from God uh, by this gospel writer's writing is not this book, I hold, but the very word of God as the gospel writer described it and formed it was, the word of God was in this person from God named Jesus. Fully human, fully divine, full of grace, full of truth, light of the world. Why it's very important to me, it's important to you. But for a number of years, it's not that I have struggled with my eyesight, but I can remember at 13 years of age, for example, uh, that I could not see things on the board at school. Uh, that was the day and age in which really they were using chalk and a chalkboard. And I was sitting at the back of, a, of the room and sometimes I couldn't see what was happening, but I listened closely enough I could make out what was going on. But somehow I could tell that some things were not right. And then I went to the eye doctor. And then he just looked at me and said, how have you been able to see anything? And so at about the age of 14, I think, I, I received my first pair of glasses. And when I put them on, I was amazed at what I could see. I did not know, for example, that looking at a, at a tree from, let's say, 20 yards off, that you could actually make out the individual leaves. I was not able to do that until I received glasses. And at the age of 16, when I received contacts, it was like a whole new world that opened up to me. And how it is that really that is a part of life and refraction and things that I don't really understand. But the truth of the matter is, is that as I have aged and as a, something that happened to my eyesight and almost 20 years ago now in terms of, of, um, of a retinal issue, that light has become even more important. For example, I can't, I can't be in a, a dark restaurant and begin to make out the menu. Uh, there are times I've gone over and I've tried to pull the candle closer to me and actually sort of held it up and tried to see some things. And, and so I just find a way to make do or Joan sometimes will just hand me this little magnifying mirror, white light to look at the menu with. Isn't it amazing what we don't see even in our world? Even if we have 20-20 vision like I do with the gift of contacts, isn't it amazing what I sometimes don't see all around me? What's interesting about this text, since it's the Sunday after Christmas, is there's no angel here. There are no shepherds. There are no wise men or magi coming to bring gifts. This is just a very significant 
theological text reflecting upon the very beginning of the created order and what God was doing then, God was doing again and sending this one as God's beloved son. I think probably during uh, the last few months, we've all begun to see the world differently than we ever had imagined seeing it. I began to think about that uh, several months ago. And then when we came to this point of the Christian year and I began to read once again, this very important text that comes after Christmas about the beginning of the life of Jesus, all the told and very significant theological concepts. I began to think about what this light truly means. I, I have to admit that sometimes I'm so busy in my own life that I am uh, particularly unaware of things that may be happening around me. It's not that I'm ignoring them, it's just that my, my mind is sort of tracking in a different kind of way. And I have to admit this, that does not necessarily serve me well as a, as a faithful Christian. It doesn't serve me well in terms of how I interact at times. I have, to, I have to admit that. But what I've noticed perhaps even more importantly than that, or at least for me right now it's very important, is that I have taken the time to really look at what is going on around me. And some of the things that are going on around me really do not involve another human being. For example, I've always thought that Texas was not a very pretty place to be in the fall of the year. Uh, I can remember thinking that trees, their leaves turn brown and drop and then you go rake them. But this year I've been so surprised about the colors about the colors that are before me. It's like getting a new pair of glasses. I'm seeing things I've never seen before. But more importantly than even that beautiful sight about fall taking on a different tone or color or an awareness for me is just being present and aware of what's happening in the world. And some of the things that are happening in the world are like they were living in darkness. A few times I've been... Uh, referred to the pandemic or to COVID-19, but I think this has really begun to shape us in some significant ways. I think it's going to shape the church in a way that we do not yet know. It's going to shape the church in this way in terms of our own witness. Let's be honest, there are people who will, it'll be a long time before they come back simply out of their own concern for their safety or good health. And I bless that. It means that somehow we're going to have to find a way to be engaged with other people. It means that somehow this very Christ that we represent, who is the light of the world, we're going to have to find different ways of carrying that light in the world and being the light in the world. And so if we're doing in-person worship in one of our churches, we still need to realize there are a host of people still engaged with us virtually. It means that somehow that we'll find new ways to teach. I've talked about this before, but it's a way in which we can form so many more groups so that people can become more deeply rooted and grounded in what the Apostle Paul talks about in Ephesians, deeply and rooted and grounded in love. And that love is the love of Christ. It means that somehow we have to finally be aware even more deeply and more broadly about that which is around us in terms of the very hurts of the world. And if we were to think about Jesus and his own ministry, that one of the things that we must say that this light of the world did was he brought healing sometimes to people who needed it. And there's something that we become aware of this year. There are many significant points of healing that must need to happen. Regardless of your political persuasion, what does the expression of your Christian life say to you? If we truly claim to follow this light of the world, who is the very essence of God in this world, what does it say that how we respond to any number of things that, it, that have been troubling this year? Can you really answer the question instead of what your political persuasion may be or what would be best for you? Could you answer in a way in which Jesus may want you to answer it? Can you see people whom you dislike as God sees them? Can you see all people 
as children of God. Can you see somehow that God would want us to fashion our own witness, our own stewardship of the creation, which is referred to in the beginning of Genesis, in a very different way than we're doing now? One of the things that Christmas does is that we have this great celebration. We enjoy being with each other and our families in which we may not have done this year. But what Christmas really needs to begin to do after the celebration of that day and even before is, is to turn the world upside down. It's the way Luke wrote about it in the Acts of the Apostles. The church turned the world upside down. It didn't mean the world became chaotic. It would mean that the world became as God began, intended it to be from the very beginning of time. It's very interesting. When you live truth and when you speak truth and you, you represent the one who is the light of the world, what you may find out is you may actually sort of find out something that uh, this light of the world found out. Even his own people received him not. It's recorded in one of the Gospels. For instance, you may remember Jesus did that first sermon. It's in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. He does that first sermon. He makes this claim that um, today this prophecy has been fulfilled in your, healing, in your hearing, and they want to run him out of town and throw him over a cliff. For instance, there's sometimes when being the very follower of the light that we claim to be does not bring you peace, does not bring you comfort, does not bring you into a place that's conflict-free. It brings you into the place in which you really leave, live into the fullness of what it means to represent this Christ. I think really now's the time, after the Christmas dinner and the gifts have been opened, for us to begin to reflect on that coming and what it truly meant. It wasn't just a, a happy time, it was a earth it was a life-changing event. Has it become that for you? And that's something I have to wrestle with at the beginning of every year after Christmas. How will it be different this year than last year? How will I truly see things? A few days ago, I was um, meeting with a group of people, um, mainly clergy in our conference, small group, 10, 12 of us, uh, some lay persons too, and uh, someone in a devotional talked about something that was written on, um, on the walls of one of the concentration camps. Uh, referred to a piece of music that had been written by Mark Miller, who many of you know, your choirs sing his music. He's been with us at annual conference, but it was, uh, I believe in God. And the person asks the question, how would you complete the sentence, I believe in God when? And I listened as people shared pieces of their story about the time they believed in God or experienced God. And none of it happened. Not one experience that was shared was about something that very good that was going on in someone's life. It was about a point that needed healing it was about a place of emptiness. It was about a place of trying to define, to find a, a purpose in one's life. And to be honest, that was one of the more moved experiences during Advent I've had. So this very light of the world, the Word, the Word, this Christ, how do you say that you believe in Him? And what will you do this coming year? What will you do this coming year? What will you do? What truth will you speak that will witness to that one who is full of grace and full of truth? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Again, my friends, I want to thank you for joining us in worship today and spending this time uh, joining with us and connecting with us, even though we're not in person, but meeting together online. I appreciate your time, and I uh, just want to thank you for being here. Um, just a word about our offering that we normally do. Uh, we have been collecting that either online, through the mail, or in person. Um, and so we still need your generous support of our church uh, and its ministries and the different obligations that we have throughout the year. And so I want to thank you for those who have been generous through this time. But I also want to encourage you uh, to continue giving or give if you have not been able to give uh, during this Christmas season as to support the ministries of our church. And so I want to pray a prayer of a blessing upon our offerings today, but also a blessing as we depart, a benediction, so to say. But let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh, great God, you have given to us the great light in Jesus Christ, which has come into our world. This light of peace, hope, and joy, and love shines on us, in us, and through us. So please dedicate these gifts to continue this, this sharing of this wonderful light in our world. Amen. Thank you again for joining us, my friends, and I hope you have a blessed day and Merry Christmas. <music>